If it spins, there's probably a bearing behind it. These essential components ensure that wherever there is an axis of motion or rotating shaft, the rotary motion happens smoothly and with precision. Bearings may seem simple on the surface, but they most certainly are not. Rolling elements need to be carefully designed to ensure they support the right ratios of axial or radial thrust. Bearing seals are key to any design where the bearing might encounter any type of dust or liquid ingress, and the tribological factors of bearing design alone are enough to fill university lectures. Global Spec is here to take some of the mystery away from bearing understanding. As you continue your bearing education, design or selection, remember that globalspec.com is your go-to source for easy, powerful search of all of your precision rotation needs. From skateboard wheels to sliding doors to huge industrial plant machinery, bearings come in hundreds of different sizes and configurations, but ultimately share one goal, to reduce friction between moving parts. While there are magnetic and fluid-based bearings, the most common types are mechanical, and they come in two distinct forms, ball bearings and roller bearings. Ball bearings consist of a row of hard metal balls trapped between two circular pieces of metal, known as races, and are secured by a retainer. The inner race is free to rotate, usually connected to an output shaft, while the outer race remains stationary. Ball bearings are commonly used in high-speed, low-load applications due to the small contact area of the balls to the casing. Ball bearings come in both single and double row forms, with double row increasing the amount of load the ball bearing is able to withstand. For applications that need to be able to withstand higher loads than even a double row ball bearing, engineers often turn to roller bearings, which utilize cylindrical pieces of metal instead of balls to increase the contact surface area whilst maintaining the same rotary motion. Both types of bearings come in different orientations depending on the more prominent direction of the load and are usually manufactured from a hardened chrome steel alloy. This alloy can be hardened further by infusing other elements like molybdenum for applications in extremely high stress environments, such as on aircraft parts. Speaking of the material, it's really important that the rollers, balls and races are perfectly round to ensure a smooth rotary motion in the application, and this is ensured with a rigorous and detailed manufacturing process for each. This is the process for the balls alone. The balls start out as wire or a rod slug containing the proper amount of material required in the finished ball. The slugs then undergo a cold heading process to form a near net spherical shape. The balls are then filed or tumbled to remove flashes and burrs. Soft grinding is employed to produce balls of uniform size. Balls are hardened by heating them to a temperature of 1565 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes, quenched in oil at 375 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes, and then tempered at 340 degrees for two hours. The hardened balls undergo a finished grinding process to achieve finished size and roundness specifications. Finally, the balls undergo a lapping process to achieve final tolerances and surface finish requirements. The rollers go through a similar process, starting off as wire but with slightly fewer steps, as cylinders are much easier to machine accurately than spheres. Once all of the components have been through their own manufacturing process, they are measured, matched and assembled into the finished products, and then shipped. Lubricant plays a critical role in maximizing the lifespan of the parts and reducing the heat even further. Many bearings are pre-lubricated with grease by the manufacturer, and this can present a couple of advantages. There is no risk of contamination with external mechanisms, and there are lower assembly, grease purchasing and maintenance costs. But with pre-lubricated bearings, the housing cannot be kept free from dirt, water or other contaminants. The limited assembly space precludes the use of a grease-filled housing and any re-lubrication with external lubricators is just not feasible. If you opt for bearings that aren't pre-lubricated, then there are a few options to consider, again depending on the application you need it for. While oil has extremely advantageous lubricating properties, the many different systems all require constant attention, maintenance, and still raise some possible environmental and machinery contamination concerns. Grease is a great option for many bearing systems due to its easy application, water resistance and low maintenance, but poor cooling properties and a resistance to motion can make it a poor choice for low torque, high speed rotating machinery. For environments where oil and grease is not feasible, engineers may turn to dry lubrication. Often though, this is a high cost, specialist method for bearing lubrication and there are drawbacks such as limited corrosion protection and a temporary increase in noise and vibration as small fragments of the solid lubricant break free. Bearings are a key player in many engineering operations and consumer products in the 21st century. 
And as you can see, there are many different factors to consider when selecting for your own application. We hope this video gives you a brief introduction and insight into the world of bearings. And don't forget to check out all of the resources at globalspec.com for even more detailed information. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.